Hey everyone, this is Bathymetrics, and in this video, I'm going to have fun and teach you how to do circular crossfade automation in an XY instrument or XYFX uh, container in Bitwig. This has nothing to do with Ableton per se, although these are some neat, neat tricks you can do in Bitwig that you cannot at all come close to doing in Ableton. I can't think of any way to pull this off in Ableton. So, um, basically I'm going to show you how to build this type of crossfader. What we're looking at is an XY instrument, and there is a different synth loaded in each one of the container chains inside of this XY instrument. So I've got uh, a Thorn synth here with a patch on it, um, VPS Avenger playing a patch here, I've got Serum playing a patch here, and I've got uh, Bass Master playing a patch here, and it's downshift in an octave. Um, so this is what it sounds like. And we can slow it down. We can also increase the separation. pretty much hearing only one synth at a time, or we can reduce the separation and let you hear a little bit of a blend of all of them at the same time. Speed it up again. Okay, pretty cool, right? Uh, we also have a similar thing happening with uh, the X, uh, XY, let's get the right track selected, uh, with the XY FX container, I've got a, a long kind of loopy ARP running through sampler and then pushing through the XY FX container over here. And this is what the ARP sounds like by itself. And here's what it sounds like with the effects engaged. Let's increase the separation. So what's going on here is I have a, a kind of glitchy time slicing reversing tool called Backmask in one of these slots. I have a Bitwig's own tree monster in here making the nice pitchy resonant types of sounds. I have Bitwig's ladder device making another type of um, uh, Moog filter fun modulation. And uh, I've got Ubik G doing some green and pitch synthesis when it's over in this quadrant. So um, I'm gonna show you how to set up these oscillators to pull off this nice circular trick. Before I do that, uh, let me show you where I got the idea for this. There is a preset in Bitwig called, let's see. Uh, Wake Mill? There it is. So there's a preset by uh, a creator named Macho. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, so sorry if I'm not. Um, and it's, it's based on the phase four instrument, and it's really cool. There we go. Didn't wait long enough for it to initialize. So this one sounds really, really cool. Let's just play a random note into it. So you can see it has a um, its own internal kind of XY crossfader that can let you modulate between pitch, glide, shape, and mod parameters of the um, of the phase four synthesizer and. <laughs> 
basically this person was pretty brilliant for figuring out how to do this and set them up so they were all operating at different uh, radii around the uh, center point of the crossfader. And it's really cool if you look at it in the full window. And so, you know, each one of these oscillators is modulating each other to a separate degree. And all of these little XY crossfades are affecting all of these parameters in different ways at different times. And it just creates this really rich, complex interaction between the waveforms. And you can even see the, the different oscillators and, you know, which exact parameters being oscillated and how far away from the center point. It's just really neat. So when I saw this, I said, I have to deconstruct this and make it work for just general XY crossfades uh, for instruments or FX. And so let me show you how to build that. Um, just kind of as an educational thing, there's not a need to actually build these yourself. They're kind of hard to describe in written form. Um, so what I've done is over in my uh, Bitwig handbook, and the link to this will be available in the comments to the video, just like all of my videos in this series. Uh, if you look in the Bitwig handbook, let's scroll down to the section on modulation. Let's just jump there. Uh, this was my last video, number 11, about making Ableton-style AMFM sign LFOs, just like Ableton sampler uses, and uh, this is the link to the video, but you can also download that preset if you don't want to build it yourself. I did describe it in the, the video, how to build it, but this is just an easy grab-it-and-go kind of preset. Um, and then down in this section, I've also made these presets and zipped them up and made them available. Let's see if I still have them in my save buffer. Okay. Yep, there we go. So um, you'll be able to download these two presets I'm about to show you how to build because they're pretty complex. It's like it would be really difficult to write out how to work them, how to set them up. So just download them and use them. <laughs> and when this video is done, I'll put a link on this text right here too. Um, so that's about all I need to say about that. So let's talk about how we build these to have this kind of behavior. It's a really simple concept. It takes a, uh, it took a little while to figure out how to make it perfectly even. Uh, let me slow down the rate on this XY instrument just a bit. Let's push the amount out again. So you can see how smoothly it's sweeping across all the quadrants. Um, let's make sure I got the right track soloed. And <clears throat> what's going on here is each of these four slots in the container correspond to the quadrants in the very corner. So when it's in this quadrant here, it's basically mostly playing uh, whatever synth or, or instrument you've loaded into the C chain. And when it's in this quadrant, that's the D chain. When it's down here in this corner, that's the B chain. And when it's in this corner, that's the A chain. And when you first load up uh, an XY of any sort, let's go back here and find all the big stuff. So I'm just gonna drag in an XY FX to show you. When you first bring it in, it's in this really compact little format. And it's not obvious how to get to the actual uh, levers or knobs that let you do the modulation. So just remember you always have to click this little uh, gear sign to get to the actual X and Y knobs that you can modulate with other things like the LFOs that I'm doing here. Okay, so just remember those are hidden at first and if you're going where the hell are they? They're hiding under that. Uh, and once you set up modulation on the X and Y knobs, you can even use just those knobs themselves as additional modulators for anything else, like if you've loaded in some FX, uh, pre-FX or post-FX into this particular container, you can then use these as modulators for some of the devices you have hiding inside these chains and so on. So it can get really crazy, but I'm just going to show you the basics. Um, the basic idea is uh, you want to use two, mo uh, two LFO devices. 
Uh, and those are these here. Just to show you how to find them. Let's go to... Helps if I actually click view, right? Find a button. Okay. If we go here into the list of modulators, it's LFO, just plain old LFO. And when you bring it in by default, it's using this kind of sine wave shape with some inertia and ballistics at the top and the bottom, but you don't want to use the sine wave shape for this particular trick. Instead, you want to make sure that um, you grab this knob right here and start with it at 0% so that it is, and you can control click it and just push zero if, you, if that negative bothers you. And so this makes it uh, a 100% constant speed throughout the waveform. It's basically a triangle shaped LFO. And because it's a triangle and it has this hard knee, there's no slowdown as it crosses through the knee at the top and the bottom, which is what a, a traditional sine wave LFO does, is it actually slows down as it passes through the, the curvy bits. So we're going to base it on this particular type of uh, triangle oscillator. And the important thing to do is, first of all, make sure it's in free running mode so that it's never restarting at any point from new note ons or when a clip rolls around to the beginning again, when it loops around to the beginning. You don't want this stopping and restarting. You just want it constantly free running. And you're going to be using the bipolar mode. And you're probably going to want to sync it to uh, a long beat division, like a, an entire bar, as its basic tempo timing thing. This, this basically makes it go through a full cycle from start to finish across the length of one bar as determined by your project clock, right? And then you can speed up or slow down the LFO relative to that beat division. You know, the whole point is just across one bar, that's the basic division. And then if it's at one to one, or exactly a value of one right here, that basically means every bar it'll go through a full cycle. And you can slow it down corresponding to that or speed it up corresponding to that. So that's the basic idea. And then the only other real trick is you have, and let me delete this one to stop confusing you. Um, one of these is assigned to the X value of the crossfader, right? So you can see this modulation appear when I hover over the knob. And the other one is assigned to the Y value. And then the most important part is they're 90 degrees out of phase with each other. That's how you get the circular behavior. So if we look at this one, the one that's modulating our X parameter, it's at zero phase. And then the one that's modulating our Y parameter is at 90 degree phase. And by putting them exactly 90 degrees out of sync with each other, uh, they'll have this, this circular feel uh, if you're if you're have the right values for the modulation so the modulation values themselves the x is going to be a value of exactly if you look over here in the inspector on the upper left you're gonna you're gonna modulate it from the center point by positive 0.50 or 50 percent basically and then the y when you modulate the y knob it's also going to be positive 0.50 so you're just basically saying go halfway with the X, go halfway with the Y, flip it in both directions because we're bipolar with this little plus minus sign and most importantly, put the Y 90 degrees out of phase. And then you can make it easy to control this by uh, setting up some macro knobs. That's You do that by uh, grabbing this thing called macro, which is just a, a knob that you can assign as a modulator to multiple different targets. So, uh, and you can name it, you can give it a name and a label by clicking up there. Um, so this one is modulating the rate on both of these LFOs. So you can see that it's modulating the rate on the Y, and it's also modulating the rate on the X. And you can see that more clearly if you just select this macro knob and then look up here in the inspector. And um, you can see that it's modulating two different rates. Um, and then this amount, so that's the speed is the rate. And then the amount macro is modulating the depth knob exactly the same on both of these. So that's this knob right down here. 
and uh, the form knob is modulating the form, which is this knob right here, and it's modulating both of those. Okay, so once you set that up correctly, and, and it's important to note that the form knob itself is in a bipolar mode, not a unipolar mode, so it starts at the center, and if, if I drag it around, it'll switch the shape. You can see how it's moving this knob from the center position, which is bipolar. All right, see how it modulates that, and it's doing it for both of the LFOs at the same time. So with these controls set up this way, you can then change the behavior of the circle, circle itself. So, you know, let me spin it out a little bit. That's about right. Let's bring out the amount just a teeny bit. So the form turns it from a circle when it's all the way over here towards the sine wave side. As I bring it towards the center where it's more of a triangle wave now, look how it's making a diamond shaped jump between the, uh, the points of the, the grid. See how it jumps in exactly a, a diagonal pointy diamond shape? And then as I keep dragging the form over in this direction, it starts having this inward curve towards the center, but it still goes all the way out to the edges at the crossfade between things. So you can you can have a little bit of control over the shape of this thing uh, by doing this. Uh, and I mostly just leave it in the circular format and mostly just play with the amount so I can isolate sounds more or whatever. Um, so that's the basic way to set it up. Like I said, I've already built this for you. You can just drop these two things into your presets and it would look kind of like this under a creator. Well, let me show you from the creator category. So you'll have a creator called Baphometrics and you'll have two little uh, presets that look like this. And the, the preset that I, I made available for download from the previous video about doing Ableton style sine wave LFOs, that's this yellow looking one here. And they'll all be under the creator Baphometrics when you install them. Um, let me tell you a little trick about installing them. It can be confusing the first couple times. The, uh, the Bitwig user library is where all of your presets are stored. It's very similar to the Ableton user library. And you can find out where the user library is on your system by going to what? Go to locations, settings, locations. And then the second uh, field here is where your library is. So in my case, I put it right on the root of my C drive uh, in a folder called BAFO user lib. And then Bitwig user lib is the name of the root folder. So if we look at that on my file system, um, I like to keep my Ableton user library, my Bitwig user library, and my machine user library all in the same exact place so that they're easy to back up. Like, you know, once every couple of weeks, I'll, I'll zip all this up and save it off in different locations because user libraries are precious. Never, ever, ever let them get corrupted. <laughs> um, so the Bitwig user library is very straightforward. Um, any of your audio clips you may have created are in a clips folder. Any multi-samples you've created are in a multi-samples folder. Um, any uh, project templates you've created will be sitting in a templates folder. And then most importantly, all the presets are here in a presets folder. And kind of like Ableton, under the covers, it, it breaks them out by the type of device the preset is made for. So uh, here's the... Uh, preset for the XYFX, and I call it sim clock, which stands for symmetrical clock because it's a symmetrical circle and it looks like a clock when it's rolling around. So that's just the short name I gave it. Uh, I did the same thing for the XY instrument, <laughs> XY instrument symmetrical clock preset. And uh, the main thing to understand when you unzip the zip file, you're just going to have this preset file, you're going to have the other preset file, and you're going to have a text file telling you how to install it. And the main thing I just want to really impress on you is if you come over to your Bitwig user library and there isn't already a presets folder because you've never made any, go ahead and make a presets folder and make sure it's spelled exactly like this with a capital P because this is what Bitwig expects is that spelling. 
And then if you, inside that presets folder, if you don't already have an XYFX or XY instrument folder, because you've never made presets for those specific Bitwig devices, manually create them, make sure they're spelled exactly like this. And then from the zip file that you download from my Bitwig document, you can just drop this one into the XYFX folder and you can drop this other one into the XY instrument folder, okay? And it's the same on Mac, it's just wherever Mac puts it, you know, the root of your user library, that's where you have to start with. So once you understand this basic pattern, it's pretty easy to figure out where to install presets as long as you know what type of instrument it was made for. Uh, not everyone's real good at explaining that if they, if they share their presets with you somehow. So uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about that. I've showed you how to build these two. I've showed you what they sound like. Now let's talk about fun variations on this theme. This is going to be a short video. Yay. <laughs> um, the first really fun variation is saying, well, what if I don't want to use all four instruments? What if I only want to crossfade between two instruments and I want to do it in this LFO-like manner and be able to speed it up or slow it down or decide how far it moves uh, into fully exclusive hearing of both instruments or just kind of constantly crossfading a little bit between both of them. So the way you would do that, let's let's start out by um, basically turning off everything in the D slot so it's not actually creating any noise. And let's do the same thing for the C slot. So now the only devices that are active are my A synth and my B synth. And of course, I don't want to be doing any Y crossfading. Y is the up and down access. So the first thing I'll do is just come over here and select the LFO that's doing the Y crossfading, and I'll disable it. So I, I just press the deactivate button. It's also a little checkbox up here in the uh, inspector that you can click to do the same thing. It's the same shortcut as deactivating clips or entire tracks. And so now I only have this uh, XLFO, and because I only have the XLFO, you can see that now the dot is just crossfading back and forth between where A is and where B is. And it's right in the middle, which doesn't matter because these two are completely muted. Um, and I can uh, come over here to the amount and make it crossfade further between the two. Let's play it so you can hear it. Start at the beginning. Slow it down a little bit. Okay, so super easy way to do crossfading between only two devices. And if I wanted for some reason to do it between two that were separated out this way, well, it's the same deal. Let's, um, let's reactivate the devices in the C slot. Let's go over to the B slot and deactivate that device. And now let's re-enable the Y LFO and we'll deactivate the X LFO. And now I'm just bouncing back and forth vertically. And if we listen to that, we're gonna hear the A and C crossfading into each other. Okay, so that's how you get a simple uh, two, two device crossfade, either in the X axis or the Y axis. You can just start with the circular thing and turn them off, and then you can go ahead and save this as a preset, do whatever you want from there. Um, another really fun way to crossfade, it, this is doing a kind of a smooth crossfading. There's another fun trick you can do using the Parsec 8 modulator. And that one looks like this. It's called Parsec 8. This is brand new in 2.4. They didn't have this until very, very recently. And this is what it looks like by default. It's eight steps long. It's kind of like the steps modulator, which looks like this. But steps could only, here, let's, there are steps. So steps is as many as 16 steps, but you can adjust it downward to only two steps or four steps or whatever. And the basic idea was, you know, you could have modulation going in different directions. 
in different amounts, and then this entire thing was assigned to a value like a volume knob or mix knob or whatever. And then as it walked through each step through various triggers that you specify down here, as it would walk through each step, it would just modulate that one knob according to the positive or negative value here. So this is super useful, and you could even set it up to just have randomized patterns and come across some happy accident that sounds good. You could make it longer steps, right? You can make it an odd number of steps to get some polyrhythms. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. It's a great modulator. But the problem is all of these steps can only modulate, you know, uh, one thing at a time or, you know, several things, but it's like all the steps just modulate the thing that it's assigned to. Now, Parsec 8 is very different and very useful because it is like steps. It only goes as high as eight steps and down to two or one even, or two or, you know, any number you want. Um, and in, it can trigger according to, you know, various useful things like note advancing or random restarts or free running or just locked to some beat division of the of the transport. Um, oops, let's put that back on transport. And then the cool thing here is you have a positive or negative value for each step, just like the steps modulator. But now you can individually assign each one of these steps to something different. And that's the magic. So let me show you what this sounds like. I'm going to get rid of this, first of all. We'll go back to the, stop that. We'll go back to the default one we had. So this is what it actually looks like. And this is super easy to set up, so I didn't make a pre-built one for you. But the basic idea is I have my XY instrument rack. And what I wanted to do was checkerboard between the four synths, like completely checkerboard. So you'll notice this dot is all the way up in the top left corner because I'm on step two. So as I play this, this instrument, watch what happens to the dot and listen to how it sounds. Okay, another nice trick. It's a way to checkerboard sounds together. And there's a, a smoothing parameter. This smoothing parameter here adjusts how quickly it transitions from one step to the next. Does it just like instantly jump or does it kind of crossfade? So I've got it 100% smooth now. Let me let you hear what it sounds like without any smoothing. And of course, that's currently set at a timing to switch steps every bar of my pattern, but I could make it every half note. Or every quarter note. And so on. So you have control over when and how it jumps. You have control over the smoothness of how it jumps. like. With 0% smoothing, it's a very vertical feeling, instantaneous jump with a lot of vertical energy because of the abrupt changes. And if you can smooth it out, very smooth. Or you can find some value in the middle that is a little bit of a compromise between abrupt jumps and a smooth jump. Okay, so a really, really useful trick. Uh, the basic idea for setting this up is, first of all, I would recommend syncing it to your transport, which means it just follows the playhead. And I would use a beat division uh, so that, you know, right now it's set for every bar of, of my song at the current tempo. And uh, the main trick is in what values you assign to these four modulators and, and what they're modulating and how. So if we hover over this first step, you can see that it's 
it's pulling the X knob all the way down to the left and it's pushing the Y knob um, all the way up to the right. Let me make sure about that. No, no, it's showing where it's locked at the current step. So it's a little hard to see. Let's, let's pop it around until it's on step one. It'll be easier to explain. Okay, so at step one, it's pulling the X all the way down to the left and the Y all the way down to the left, which pulls the dot all the way down into the left corner. In step two, so in step two, it's keeping X all the way to the left, but Y is now maxed out, which pushes the dot up to the top corner here. And then in the third step, we've got both X and Y full positive, which pushes the dot up into this corner. And then finally, here we have X full right, but Y all the way down. So that puts the dot down in this corner. So it just loops through those patterns based because of this loop button being on. And the way that it looks up here is, you know, each particular modulator is modulating both the X and the Y just in different directions and different amounts. So for step one, it's negative 0.5 on both of them to take it to the full extreme. For step two, it's negative X positive Y, which keeps it to the left but pushes it up here. For step three, it's positive for both of those knobs. So that's X all the way over here and Y all the way up here. And then finally, step four is uh, X positive and Y negative, which puts X over here, but Y is down in this corner. So that's it. So a couple simple, interesting ways to make use of the XY devices uh, or containers, technically they're called in Bitwig. Um, really, really cool creative plugins. They allow you to do all kinds of neat, neat tricks. You can use all kinds of modulators on them to do interesting things. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If, um, you know, as with all my videos in this series, if you found this useful uh, I, and you want to show your appreciation, <laughs> of course, you can like and subscribe the video itself. But it would also really help me if you went to my SoundCloud page and my Spotify page and uh, threw me a follow. Uh, I'm just at a point in my career where follows are helpful. Um, they still matter to me. <laughs> so that would be really cool if you did that. Thanks for hanging with me and I'll see you next time.